Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to a new little segment I call the Propaganda Cast Lair. Yes, indeed, the Propaganda Cast Lair, where we'll, I will be focusing on making smaller video segments. Basically, you know, smaller videos for this segment. Basically, more training instructional videos, more specifically towards parts of strategy of Company News 2 or tactics and whatever. For example, right now, this will be a video on openings. Currently for the Germans, of course, I'll also make one for the Soviets, and I'll also make some sort of more videos for basically, you know, analyzing the opening min op minutes of the openings, going through them, explaining what units are sort of used, why, how things can be mixed up, what's good, what's not good, what you have to keep in mind with the different openings. I'll sort of gap five to six minutes from different games and sort of analyze the different openings. So that's that, of course, the entire segment, of course, will about be 15 to 20 minutes, and generally that's how I plan on doing it, sort of. 15 to 20 minute videos analyzing different aspects of company views, openings, certain particular units and their usage, mines, barbed wire, smoke, you name it. I'll sort of try to go through it, of course, also some doctrinal abilities. And so now let's even go through some openings using more doctrinal units. This one will be, though, with regular units, ones that are not dependent on doctrines and not doctrines you have to pay for. Those will come later, if there's an interest in that, of course, if there's an interest in these sort of segments, of course, I'll do a lot more of them. And, of course, if there is, I plan on doing them sort of, you know, once every second day, or at least a few every week. Rather, depends on how things go. So, here we go, it's a propaganda cast layer. I'll be popping in one of my own games, sort of, as the initial start-up, putting myself in on the line. And I'll be focusing exclusively on the Germans again, that's really what matters, that is the Germans, that's what they do. Uh, probably in this can't try to sort of get through three to four games again, looking at different openings, sort of what you can do. <coughs> so right here, of course, we are looking at one German opening. This is probably one of the more standard ones, at least that is my standard one. Of course, one Pioneer Start, Infanterie Company up. You could up for two Pioneer Starts, and I'll try to bring in a video, of course, that focuses on that. But right now, it's the one Pioneer Start, it's a get about getting a bunch of Grenadiers out. Grenadiers is basically being your stable part of the force. They are the groundwork, the foundation of your troops, your army. They are the most flexible, they can work offensively, they can work defensively, they're the most mobile one. They're not the sort of unit if you get catch them off guard, you know, they'll oh crap, we need to set up and put down no. They're very much they can react faster to things. That is the strength. They might not have overwhelming firepower like the MG, they might not instantly take down some poor bastard or fire large mortar rounds, but again they possess a certain amount of power, they can do a lot of things if you handle them correctly. In that sense, infantry is one of the best units in the Reclaimed game, no matter fire. what. Again, if you know how to use your infantry. And of course, in this case, I always opt for two grenadiers if possible. Thus, getting a nice spot. basis. They can fight, they can fight together, and usually I try to keep my grenadiers together. So in one case, one squad gets engaged, the other one can rush over and assist. That way, ensuring I won't be in a lot of trouble right away. And of course, that is what I personally believe important as the Germans is keeping some sort of coherence so you don't get completely thrown off guard and thrown back. Then I personally then add in a machine gun after I've got this infantry base. I throw in an MG42 which can then follow up and then of course in case there's an engagement they can immediately rush in to support that engagement or if there's not I can then you know set it up to for example cover an exposed position or hold an area where I think there might be an attack while my infantry for example is occupied elsewhere. So, for example, those are some of the conditions you can sort of try and keep in mind while playing as a German again. If you go for this build, you're opting also for a more aggressive build, because, again, infantry is much more aggressive than, say, you know, a support weapon, which, again, is a support weapon. It supports your infantry. It doesn't work so well without anything to support. And there we go, of course, in this case, also popping units into buildings. It's a nice little t initial tactic. It's a good way for basically, you know, getting a quick idea of what is going on in the battlefield. And of course, in that case, also perhaps bring in a bit of an unpleasant surprise to your opponent. Also, here, a little early tactic, which of course can also be used for the Russian, but for the Germans, basically, you know, having your pioneers support your gun, it is, your gun, it is engaged by range of pioneers, adding a bit of extra firepower up close. So, right now, we've got to see the conscripts are quickly pushed away. The pioneer gun, it is combo proving quite valuable, of course, ensuring we always try to get in cover. And before two setting up support here. And the grenadiers down here continuing to fight within the church premises. And of course, in this case, quickly getting out. 
But there's nothing wrong in some good early building uses. The Glenys right here, they're running into a problem. And the Pioneers quickly moving on, showing some more chairs on the course. That is an important part of this sort of strategy again early on. I mean, the Pioneers will be doing most of your t taking Ready. ground. The Glenys, of course, will be sort of taking, but they will be more about, you know, pushing ahead, trying to push back your opponent. And again, through this more coordinated Glenys tactics, where you have two squads working in sync and for some have an MG42 cover up one of your flanks. We've been promoted, but does that include a of course, it is also one of the lighter ones. It's not the lightest build, it's not the lightest opening, but at the same time, it does have its weaknesses. It doesn't necessarily give you that much more, and again, it's very much about spearheading with your troops in that way, sort of trying to cut down the amount of territory your opponent can sort of, you know, attack from. And of course, you may, of course, need to modify it with additional machine guns, but again, that even then becomes sort of a different opening. In this case, part of it is actually taking up reasonably quick, getting the light the mechanized company up reasonably fast as well, and in fact, also modifying one of your grenadier squads with a light machine gun, thus further increasing firepower, thus further increasing sort of Germany, effectiveness. This is very much one, you know, strategy or opening that is dependent on then getting the light to make a nice company and then following up with either some Panzer Grenadiers, a scout car or a half track depending on the situation. If you're having a bit of trouble initially as early Panzer Grenadier squad can work nicely, have your bit extra sort of push ahead at that extra cost. If you're sort of looking alright but you're sort of a bit on of your flanks and such, a scout can can for example also work quite nicely, can also be used quite handily aggressively. A half track can also be used in that direction though if you want to more focus on your infantry and for some that way push them ahead more steadily and of course keep them supported at the front line and reinforced thus ensuring you don't have to retreat. Again, all sort of dependent on how you feel about these things. In this case the no light machine upgrade, I'm slowly sort of working my way through the village, clearing out the buildings as he leaps from building to building. Right here. Sort of again, first five minutes have passed, we sort of had a look at how one way you can sort of play the Germans initially, what you can do and sort of the thoughts behind of doing it, of course the mountain players who do this for the completely different reason, of course that's fine, but again, you know, these are my thoughts, these are my perspectives on this sort of opening, its strengths and its weaknesses, and sort of how you want to utilize it. This is not the sort of force you hang back with, this is the one you push with and hope, you know, for heaven's sake, your opponent actually plays along. So, moving on to the next sort of opening and what one can do. And here we go, the next opening, the next set of, you know, possible German starts you could, for example, consider. And this time under the command of Fortune. Let us see what he does. Again, we're looking at a one pioneer start, no dual pioneer starts. And of course, see how this sort of continues, how it works out, what he will do. <laughs> Also noting, I'll be focusing on one versus one simply because I mean, with two versus two things get a lot more messy, and again, a lot of things has been t taken into consideration as well, so they're less handy. Just you know, quickly pointing that out in case there's any confusion. Again, we noting the two can lead again that stable sort of nucleus of the German force of the in Company of Heroes two. Again, it serves as a very nice basis, and can basically again you know keep a lot of other things you know on their backs depending on what you want to do. Playing aggressive here with the Pioneers, of course, taking ground. A bit of aggressive play here from Sir, turning up some barbed wire. It can not be really relevant, but, you know, nice to note. In particular, in this case, it's not just denying cover, but also pretty much direct access to this point. In many regards, being much harder to move around here. So that's actually a nice little detail there. But so far, too, can it's not, though. He's not going for an MD-42. He's not even going for a mortar. So what, do you wonder, could he be going for, then? Well, let's see and find out, though it's going to be less likely it's going to be anything else than a sniper. Of course, Pioneer's going to go into a bit of trouble again, he was all trying to play aggressive there. Now he's done, going to do his following up, and there we go. Scharf shoots on the way for Deutschland. Pioneer's are not doing so well. Kronsk is pushing ahead, and again, we, get, we have this nucleus, and then we get the sniper. Again, this is then going to be a more aggressive strategy, it's not going to one way sit back, because again, the sniper is very much, you know, something you want to use a bit more offensively, not hang back with, and again, that also means it's unlike those say, getting a lot of gunners, this is more focused on directly just getting some kills and draining out your opponent from afar. 
I mean, you had something similar and come here to you get two folks going to need I believe it was one or bike, something like that. Get a sniper, I can't remember specifically, but you know, the sniper being an important part, the sniper being there to basically slowly, but yet not too slowly, drain the life out of your opponent by just directly dealing kills from afar. And doing so quite nicely. So as we go, we see the sniper moving up from Fortune, moving up to the front line, they're going to need mod again, serving as a front line, holding back the Russians, keeping them occupied until the sniper can arrive and begin plucking away at their live strings, ending lives left and right. Now of course in this case, it's not going to hold up so well as we do see that river down to here is pushing it pretty aggressive for us. Well you might want to wait for the sniper a bit, but in this case again there we go, sniper moving up, immediately getting one kill. Might be an idiot to get him into a building right there so he can sort of get some nice lines up. But still, shooting away. And he's popping around here. Another kill there within mm, 10 to seconds after, I suppose. But still, you know, constantly getting a kill. That way, keeping up the pressure. And basically keeping a bit a little war of attrition going here against the Russians. Now we do see an MG following up. Because, I mean, ultimately, it will be needed to keep flanks secure and even ensure the sniper can't get so easily rushed in that regard. It's actually quite vital. And while this strategy is very much oriented towards, you know, taking lives, straining manpower, it's not really good at holding ground because, again, it's a very vulnerable force. You only got that bare infantry nucleus. You got an MG42, which can only really cover one flank, and again, you can't really press too much. And then you've got the snipers quite vulnerable, so it's very one that is rather has some risks when it comes to the enemy flanking aggressively with, say, vehicles, any such thing, or just some infantry. And that, of course, is the problem. You have to be very much aware of your flank. You have to be sh keep a con complete control of things. Check every corner because if you do not, you know, for some, keep everything under control, you might suddenly find your sniper ambushed and killed. So in that regard, it's a bit vulnerable. Though in this case, you have to see there's an additional thing here coming underway: a mortar, a granat, and therefore further modifications. <coughs> and of course, with all these openings, you can of course try and modify them again as long as you keep in mind what these modifications mean. For example, you get a mortar. You're more specifically targeting, you know, dark in opponents, also in buildings where the sniper, of course, might not quite be as focused. And of course, the mortar also does like to expose itself. Plus, the mortar also works nicely in more clumped up infantry. Again, the sniper is more against more singular units. But still, granats in the effort out. No taking up going on so far. But again, note, he is doing damage, he's forcing back his opponent's troops, but again, he's not actually holding a lot of territory. He's very much having trouble getting much ground at any time and actually, you know, holding it as well. We see that his opponent's already gained a much larger amount of territory. That force gets coming again, we know he's 74 2 while doing his best, simply can't come against it much, and again, quickly gets flanked here by a squad of consoles, they're going to lose as well. It's now, of course, doing what it can, but even then, there are limits to what this stout German marksman can do. So that is very much something to keep in mind if you decide to utilize this kind of opening. And now also have the mortifying, there we go, Molotov on the MG42 again. Pioneer's running into trouble there. Ultimately, although we do again see him push away, but again, overall, map control not strong, and now we're actually getting hit by his own troops. So again, there are some clear issues with this. But enough about this opening, let's move on to the next one, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the third sort of opening. I think I'll sort of stop with that for now. I mean, of course, I'll be doing more fucks initially after this on the search. Of course, I'll be doing more on the Germans. Of course, there's more I've discovered and come up with, and of course, sort of variations on them. Yes, you know, sort of just to keep this a bit brief in case you know this isn't necessarily hugely popular. Then again, if there is, of course, there will easily be a lot more of them. So, of course, in the comments, let me know what did you think about this, and of course, what you'd like to see, you know, besides you know, Soviet opening video, because I'll be doing that right after this, but of course, other things. So, a little that to keep in mind, but right here, we'll be looking at Dave M playing as the Germans. What sort of things will he be playing at, I wonder? We're seeing an infantry company going out again, the one pioneer start. Savannah pioneer start, Achtung. Infantry company going up. Once more the nucleus. The core, if you will. The foundation of all German stuff. 
can't be just moving about. Again, lots of conscripts, but again, we're not really going to be focusing on the Soviets. He seems enough not rushing for the direct near fuel pond, though it clearly seems like the Russians are going for this one. Again, the one farthest away. Always thought that a bit curious, but there we go. So first gun of squad arrives. So far, nothing other than usual. Then again, I would imagine he'd go for this, but instead he's going for this. Which is certainly a bit interesting. And there we go, actually, we're seeing a third gun here scored out. This is definitely going to be one of the more infantry heavy. And so initially, there's these units. going to be no support weapons. So, again, this is one much more focusing on aggression, on attacking, on mobility, on maneuverability. Though, of course, we'll see how much of this, depending on what he gets next, if he gets next. Something from this, or if he just techs up. That is also something vital to keep in mind. There you go, the third one of these squad so far, they're all working sort of towards the same area. We there we go, one heading this way, looks like the other might hit the other. Russians are very much focused on this area, interestingly enough. They're a little so far seeing a movement towards here. And there we go, we actually see a fourth kind of discord. This is the one of the German infantry heavy. This is probably the heavy, well, not secure. the heaviest, you can probably get fire, but still pretty infantry heavy. This is very much focused on aggression, on trying to gain map, on trying to gain presence. By laying down some fire, not getting locked down in one place, basically more in advancing with the grenadiers, trying to overpower your opponent here and there. Well, of course, not spreading out too far, so of course you get out that way overpowered and outmaneuvered yourself. In this case, he does end up in a bit of a situation with the conscripts rushing to house to house. He himself might be the scientist as good as it is again, so house to sort of set up positions there. Grenadiers there again, Grenadier. working in tandem, working together, cooperation, that is how you want to do it. Conscript, Grenadiers holding up, reverse the conscript, but there we go, Molotovs up. Note there, he then proceeds to pretty much after that, tag up. House lit on fire, Grenadiers moving out to there, just sifting out, supporting the other. Leaving this one behind, and then we've got a third squad. Moving out to support the first one. So a bit of shifting in tactics. More Molotovs forcing them out of the game, but you know, also again, there's very heavy use of buildings to sort of further extend the durability and lifespan of your Grenadier Squadron on the fleet, because that's rather one of this sort of opening sweetnesses. You're very much dependent on them doing all the work, but of course, they will also put themselves much more in harm way, and they will much quicker take losses and be forced off the field. And you won't have much actually to help hold it, except other gunners, who again will of course with their own limitations against that is something you have to be aware of. You can easily lose map control if you're not careful, because again, you know, the squads quickly also lose combat effectiveness. That is also one of the weaknesses of the gunners. Again, they're very much dependent on every member as possible. Again, with an MD42, you lose one, you've still got the main gun, finally. Same with the mortars, of course, with the sniper. I mean, there's no losses, but still, you know, you still got that one thing. But again, with the Grenadier Squads, the damage output is very much dependent on the yeah. fitness, on the durability of the squad. So again, the longer you keep pushing at them, the less effective they'll become. That's also usually why you get the LMG, but of course, he's playing munitions on rifle grenades, so that way, trying to extend and get a bit more out of them. But again, if you are going to go for this, then light machine guns will be very necessary eventually. Nice use there, Ravi Grenades again, he's constantly keeping them working with each other, which is great, but again, we are noting he is suffering quite a bit. And again, all of a sudden, this squad down to one man is a lot less combat effect. I mean, that is a 25% drop in effectiveness, and again, that is rather one of the weaknesses of it. So again, keep that in mind, if you do decide to go Grenadier Heavy, you will eventually need something to keep them a bit more going in the field. Either half time we are seeing like him guys company up here, or a command bunk up, we need something, because if you constantly have to run back and forth here, reinforcing Grandiers, that is not ready. going to be sustainable in the long run. So again, vital to remember, most vital. And there we go, we do see a half tank is on the way to help with this endeavour. And of course, a light machine gun though can help with this, because all of a sudden you have a weapon that is considerably less dependent on the number of squad members, and overall of course will boost the firepower of the squad, so... That is actually also one of the vital reasons the light machine gun is there, because again, it does allow the Germans in the long run to make up for one of the weaknesses, which again is their lower squad numbers, which again can easily affect them. There we go, following up with a Panzer Grenadier. We are seeing this is very much infantry heavy, and again, continuing with the aggressive infantry play 
basis of this opening. Just having the half to there to keep the infantry presence in the field, thus ensuring he doesn't have to pull them back in most cases. Gotten him, it's cold. So let us start right there, guys. We can just sort of look at different openings depending on your sort of what you can vary after kind of this. Of course, there'll be other openings. There'll be ones where you go with the MG first. Lots of pioneers. Such matters again. I figure that sort of go for sort of variations on you know you get some kind of this. Then what do you get afterwards? What sort of place are that because again rather again explains you know the sort of importance you know what your kind of this play and again you know sort of depending on how many kind of this you have and what order you get them again you sort of get a different opening with different ideas and of course also can it give me a good chance to explain what are the weaknesses of going so heavily on the kind of this what sort of problems could you run into if you go that heavily on the kind of this so again keep those things in mind so uh, there you go I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned something from it if you did want to subscribe tell your friends share it if you didn't you know send me a pleasure and write some feedback in the comments please let me know what did you think of this the propaganda cast layer would you love to see more again uh, let me know share it so everybody else can also know how much you love this do please also do that with my other videos of course but there you go again hope you enjoyed it see you another time cheers